right. It was part of it just sitting there because it was broken. Oh, did it break as you were digging or something? No, when I was right, when I was like smoothing the ground over. It, on this day, it broke when you were doing that. Okay. Was that after you were all done? And it seemed as though maybe the first people that got there saw it was, was it stuck in the ground. I guess it was like not like standing up, but it was like laying down. Oh, okay. Were you planning on coming back? I mean, I don't know. If, I don't think so. At this point, then, this is just before then, in a couple of hours, you would make it back home mm-hmm. to see Officer Kumrad. Okay. And so once she's buried, then... That's when people start showing up, I believe. Did you notice, was she cut or broken or bleeding in any way? No. I mean, I know, like, the... Bloodshot eyes you were talking about, and I was that at that point. Yeah. Other than that, no. Um, had she partially given birth? No. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Remember, she she had a shirt and think blue underwear on. Okay. That's it. And so at that point, she was okay. Thank you. I know that wasn't. It. Can you can you tell us about? <clears throat> obviously, you know when the district attorney got up and talked about felon's injuries and stuff. Yeah, I didn't want to hear about that. Right. Can you tell us about that? As far as, like, her biting her tongue? And ripping her frenulum, which is that connective skin from your lip to your gum. It was gone. Her gums had, like, a... It looked like a hole in them. From, and the pathologist said it was from her... Obviously struggling to get away. I didn't know what that I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Could it be that that's what happened? So like I didn't put my hand like over that over her like like that. Is that what you're talking about? Well, it would have been just downward pressure on her this area. I didn't I didn't see any of that when I picked her back up. Like it was, was it like her lip was like missing or something? No, no see this skin that uh-huh. connects there? Yeah. That was ripped. Like it was gone. So it kind of made like I a mean, hole maybe, in her gum. I, I'm just thinking maybe it's like, it's just maybe like if her mouth hand was not her head was like twisting back and forth, would that have done that? Yeah. I had a blanket open. I don't know. Like, did you feel her doing that thrashing? Like you're trying to get away? I or? felt her head moving back and forth. You did? But I don't know. I didn't know that it happened. Could you tell if she was trying to yell or say anything? Or? The only thing I was the daddy no, and then like the some like a grunt here and there. Trying to like. Trying to breathe. Mm-hmm. During that time, do you remember getting phone calls from Nicole Atkinson? Mm-hmm. After, uh, I think, before she got to my house or after? Just any time during that morning. I think I didn't get one until I saw her on my doorbell camera. And that was, what, 10 o'clock? Yeah, I was right around there. Okay. And so at that time, had everything been done out of 3319? Yeah, it was at a different site. It was at a pumping unit. Okay. So you went from there when it was all done. So the girls are in the oil, uh, shenanigans in the ground, and maybe a little bit of cleanup. Um, was there any questions we had about the sheets or any garbage cans or, or garbage sacks? No, I think okay. I answered those already. All right. So then you went from that site to another site to work? And yeah, because we had, there was a, at that survey 319, there was a little spill that that's the, that's where we most everybody showed up there because that's still that was there. We're trying to figure out what happened. Oh. While well, you're on that subject, we back up the, the night before you had some text messaging about going out there. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was, I think, Friday that we had figured out there was a spill out there from, like, it's an old site. It's set up a little different. So what had happened was there was a downcomer, and then there's a sidecomer going into those oil tanks, and one of the downcomers is tied into a back pressure line that split, and every time it was dumping oil, it was split on the ground, and it was, the oil was coming up okay. out of the ground. And we decided just to go out there 
on Monday because it was Friday and he had like switched it out or either he shut it in or switched switched lines or he covered it up and see if it was going to come back or not. Okay. And then it's more specifically you talked or you text about how you would go out there and take yeah, care of it? Yeah, I was going to take care of it for him because okay. I mean, I've gone out there plenty of times. Okay. Because so I, I used to when another guy was out there as far as another foreman he showed me around out there like a year or so ago and I just got familiar with the place and I just wailed them out okay. and so that was a genuine yeah, that, was, that wasn't yeah. a pre-alibi no. that was because there was a lot of people that said that you wouldn't normally do that I'm Normally help somebody? No, like a, a field, to your position, not you specifically, but your position doesn't do that kind of stuff. Well, that's the thing. Like when I was a rover and to a field coordinator, I still try to do everything I used to do. Okay. That's still like, I wasn't good at delegating stuff. I just used to just doing stuff on my own or just okay. like taking care of it for somebody else. Right. Um, I wasn't good at the whole like, hey, you could do this, you could do that, yeah. while I sit over here. And, and well, you see what it looks like to us, I know, you I know, know. It's like, when it, it came up, we're I like, know. I don't know making plans to be out there, you know, that day. But that's not what it was. That was, I was real. No. Okay. I was just not asking to help him. So how long were you there? What time do you think you were done with the girls? I not really tell. I mean, I think everybody started showing up there by around 7.45, 8 o'clock. Okay. So. And then you were there. Did you see you went to a different site? Yeah, it's like the, I think it was either the 1029 or the 629 or something like that. And so, how long were you at that site? The rest of the day until I got called away. So then that was, you were there for at least a couple hours until you heard Nicole Atkinson on the doorbell. Yeah. And then, I think there was even more time after that until you started coming home. Yep. And you got home at 2, Sue something? No, it was closer to 1.30, okay. right around there. Yeah. So somewhere around, you know, 9 o'clock-ish. All the way till twelve thirty or twelve or one or something, and then and then came home. Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a lot to do about coming home and listening to that Metallica song. Have you heard about that? Battery. I've heard about I've heard, I've heard a Metallica song that people have been some of the singing lyrics to it called Battery. Do you remember doing that? That was uh, Nikki Kessinger. She liked the song, or she just wanted to know what it meant. Oh, so I just, that's, why that's why you looked it up. Mm-hmm. I just kind of looked at the. I didn't have the CD with me, so I didn't. Okay. You know, I and just kind of looked at the words. A bit. And was that on the way home? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was just a different time. That was a different time. Okay, and, and so the media you probably got a hold of that because it says battery, right? Okay, but it's like you know, it's it's more about like a like a family coinciding as a battery. Okay, you know, not like you know hitting somebody. Sure. Yeah. Why did Nikki want to know what it meant? I don't know. It was it was kind of strange. I mean, she she's very into different types of music, and I mean, music I never really thought I'd ever listen to. And like, she got me into a few things there as far as music was, but like, battery was just something that she asked me because I knew I knew Metallica pretty well. She just wanted to know, like, hey, what's this? What's this? The lyrics lyrics mean? You know, I just down, yeah, just looked it up, just to look at all the words together and just put it in put it in my head again and all the. Just made something out of nothing. That's why it's strange. I got those lyrics in a in a, in a letter. Oh, so now does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, some specific lyrics to it. Yeah. I think that guy from California. The oh, that was the kid. The yeah. Point. The yeah. Head senior. Okay. Um. With regards to then, when you get home, the, you and the officers, you know, saw what they saw. You mentioned that you took the ring off her finger, um, and then the book. You, did you throw that in the trash? Okay. Um, there was another book, Body of Evidence. Does that sound familiar? That you had in your cell. A body of that um, Patricia Cornwell. Maybe Is that summer. Right? Probably. Mm-hmm. Did it in Lowell County. Mm-hmm. What was that about? That was just one they gave me. Who gave it to you? The. Uh, Deputies. Not or, your attorneys, or, or, or? Oh no, they couldn't give me books. Oh. No, any book that I had was given to me by their book cart that they had. So you didn't ask for that book, or? No, they just kind of give me like, hey, I read some Brad Thor books. Um, he was like a military guy, and Patricia Cornwell. My grandma always read her books and thought it was. I mean, she was always. She loved those books, and 
not sure if that was probably the, one of the first books, not the first book I read there, but probably the second book I read there. But it was like they had to give me, here's four books, choose. What other book did you read? Do you remember? The first book they gave me when I was in Suicide Watch was, I, I don't know why, but it's Murder at Something. And I was like, I looked at him and was like, that's, that's the one we got. I'm like, okay. But, huh. They handed you that, that mm-hmm. book by itself, no other choices? No, nah, the next book I got, another guy that was, I guess they're overcrowded there, a guy was sleeping on a cot under, outside my door. He's like, here, try this one. That was one that was based like in the 1800s. It's more of like a situational book like a time period book so that was a little more yeah. calm but that one that was the first book they gave me you don't remember what it was called murder at some point we were at the Truman Center Truman Center yeah I think it was um I remember the Kennedy Center Kennedy Center um I think it was written by Margaret Truman did you read it mm-hmm. was it good I didn't, I'd never read, read a book in a long time, so it was, it was different. But like, like some of the books they gave you, like when you're in the hold, I know you're not allowed to have books in there besides the Bible. But the the, uh, the counselors there let me have a couple of books, and they just like, I, you know, here's the ones to choose from. This one's they had. I told them like mystery books or something like that, and that's the ones. Hmm. It's kind of crazy they're giving them like murder books. You hope that it wasn't some sort of yeah. insult or, you know, you can only hope. Um, okay. <clears throat> what do you think of yourself now? I don't, I don't. <laughs> back, back when all this happened, when I was in Will County and everything, I just, I didn't, I definitely didn't feel like myself anymore. Like, it, when my attorneys would talk to me, and like, talk to some of my friends and like some of the stuff they would say like I like, would say good things but I'm just thinking to myself how could even anybody even say those things about me now being what happened it's like people that I knew and that I never talked to again that I, like maybe I was like the roommate like back in the day or like went to school with or something like that they just, now they're just going to say that's you know it's like Chris Watts that's you know guy with the high school that's the guy like you know he did all this horrible stuff to his family and now it's like I know I shouldn't really, you know, take to heart what other people think about me so much. It's just a matter of like what God thinks about me, what I, what like, what He thinks, what His opinion is, not not anybody else's. I mean, everybody's gonna have their opinion about everybody. Like before I got in trouble, I mean, I was always the guy. Hey, look, they're judge somebody on TV. You know, like like that guy that's no orange jumpsuit. That guy that's you know. I killed that guy. I got that break back of somebody. You know, like, oh, you know, that guy's horrible. Now I'm the... And it's like, now, like, when we come out at, like, 6, six o'clock at night and there's something on the news, like, I try not to even pay attention to it. It's like, I don't want to be in that position where I'm judging somebody else because that's, you know, what people were doing to me. And I don't want to be that person anymore. But I just hope that I can, you know, step back and kind of look at everything that I've done in my life and then, like up to that point and just like I did some good things but a matter of the most important thing I screwed up the worst and so if I can at least maybe help somebody and uh however much time I have left was was it your intent the whole time you were taking the girls out there that they were that you were going to do that to them honestly it's like when I got this when I got there I didn't I didn't think it was going to like you talking about the tanks or yeah, like, well, just... I mean, I, I just... I, the thought process and all this, none of this makes sense. That's why I know you guys keep asking these questions because it doesn't make sense to me. But I, I guess, I mean, like, did you... You could have done it before you guys left. I don't And not had him, you know, alive in the back seat. They could have been with Shanann in the back seat. So. I didn't think about anything, really. Like, as far as, like, how everything was going to happen, I don't know, like, why I happened why I left everything out there in the field and why, like, all this stuff, like, just, none of this makes sense. At all. But to Tammy's point, did you think that it, they might be coming back or did you know they wouldn't be coming back? I don't know, it's, 
man, the whole trip out there, I mean, it was like I was on, like I wasn't thinking. It was like, it's like I, in my mind right now, I'm thinking back. I'm like, I'm hoping that I wasn't, like, that I wasn't coherent enough to make that decision to where I knew I was going to kill my girls. I was, I'm just hoping that, you know, like, like no, no father would want everyone to do anything to hurt his, his blood and flesh, but I did that, and I just don't understand how it happened. So, I mean, I even read books that say, you know, like, no, no dad would ever do anything to hurt his children. It just happened. So I always think of myself, like, did I, was I even a dad at one point? I don't know. But I just... It's gonna take a long, long time to guilt and everything to get just to. Have get you to asked for forgiveness from God? Mm -hmm. yeah. It just takes a long time for me to forgive myself. And that's one thing that's not Thank you one day for getting me too. Stay with me. Yeah, I think I think you said earlier that you were so angry at Shanann or whatever that you were gonna you know anyone in your path of destruction or whatever was gonna get it basically kinda is what you kinda made it sound like. I'm not saying that exactly right, but why were you so angry at Shanann? I don't know if it was just because of separated me and my family pretty much because I mean it happened at the wedding like that's the reason they didn't come to the wedding I mean I blew up at my family to a point where I, I said some horrible things to them back you know back in 2012 that I'll you know I pretty much told my family that you know I don't need them anymore because I have <laughs> I, I said you know I cussed my mom out I did all this kind of stuff I never thought you know and I don't know if it was just like Shan coached me on to do it or if it was just like rage that was like I'd never seen before. And then I don't know if it was just everything that happened in July with I can't see my kids and I'm not sure if they would if they're ever gonna go see him again. I don't know. And it was just like I don't know if that had something to do with it, that something inside of me just triggered it and then just like all that pins up from the wedding and everything, just like like a, a long fuse that finally just went to its end. What happened in 2012? There was a way. My mom and Shanann just like, like from when I proposed to her, it was at the beach and from then on it was just like, like she always went up to Shanann and was like, I, I didn't need a ring like that when I was your age. I, don't, I didn't need all these fancy things when I was your age. And, just kind of kept boiling over and boiling over and we just kept, they never agreed on anything. It was just like, you know, they, we didn't really need their help to do anything. We just like, so we'll just pay for it ourselves and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it was just back and forth. And I think she, maybe my mom just never thought she was good enough. She always thought she was hiding something from me. So. She always thought Shanann was hiding something? Like what? Kind of stuff from her past, or like you know. Oh, know. I see. Yeah. So there's some conflict at a barbecue when all the families got together. And the first, maybe a barbecue that Shannon put together for everybody to get to meet each other. Two families, if you call that. Like when you first started dating. Oh. I mean, we did have something like that, but I didn't. Oh. Remember like a any kind of arguments at any place like that. I know, like, when I proposed to her, Shanann had her family come down to the beach, too. They said, said, stayed at a separate a separate house. But as far as, like, a barbecue right now, I don't remember one that was like that. Way before then? Yeah. yeah. I, I, remember the, I remember the time when I asked Frank to, if it was okay if I had asked Shanann to marry her. I remember that little we'll get-together. I don't think... And what was the book at the wedding about? It was just my mom and pretty much my sister just, 
Stone Leopard. Oh. I guess that it was, they just thought, you know, that I had, that they, that Shannon had taken me away from them and moved me out to Colorado. Oh. Because we, we were in Colorado and we flew back to get married. Oh, okay. Because I, we had, we went to Colorado for Thanksgiving to visit some friends. And we decided to move out there like a couple months later. Okay. So in like, so that was like April. I moved out there April 2012. We got married in November 2012 in North Carolina. So they always thought I was just taken. And she took me away out there. And then Is there something with invitations or something? Your sister was supposed to send invitations. Or? Yeah, there was. Okay, now you're bringing some memories back. Um, there's something to do with that, and then my sister wanted, you know, her kids, oh, my sister wanted her kids to like to ring bear and like something else, ring bear and flower girl, and then she then like, you know, she told her no, or, oh wait, either Shannon told her no or Jamie backed out of, because of something else, and then it just like all blew up. And is that pretty close to the wedding? Yes. Yeah, a couple, within a couple weeks. Did they go to the wedding, your family? Uh, my grandma did. But your parents and your sister did not go? Nope. Ronnie wasn't there either? No. Nobody was there. It was, uh, my grandma was there, and then, like, the the dance when I used, when, like, you know, the the groom dances with his mom, like, uh, it was, I would dance with Mark's mom and my grandmother. It's sad, isn't it? I mean, it all comes from a place of love, you know, them yeah, loving you and not wanting to get stolen. And it was a, it was a great day. I mean, everybody was really happy. I mean, it's it's always just rang in the back of my head. They were never there, and every time they look at pictures, it's just like, oh, where's uh, they're not there? Mm-hmm. Never knew if they actually were going to come, anyways, but. As far as like, you know, sometimes they'll just like, all right, we're just gonna go, just to, just to be there. But they never knew if that was the case. And so then when Tammy was asking, why were you so mad at Shanann? Um, it was part of it, just this whole family strife. I, I, that's the only thing I can think of right now, because I mean, there's no other reason really to be mad at her. I mean, she, we took care of each other our whole last four years. It was just like a good relationship. I mean, it's just like, if I never met Nikki, would I ever have, you know, thought our relationship was bad? I would not. Interesting. You know, I, I, you know, that's one thing I always thought about, like, even Nikki asked me, like, if, you know, I don't want you, she said, I don't want you to leave your wife if, just because of me. I'm just like, like, what do you mean? She said, well, just, if, you know, if you met me, like, would you have known? I never thought I would have strayed away from her at all. Like, I, I've never followed, like, tried to follow anybody, you know? Right. Did she, was Shanann checking your phone, or...? She always had my phone. She always checking your phone? So how did you get past that? I used my work phone. To text? And you had some secret apps, right? That was on my personal phone. I'm, Were you using anything else to contact, have contact with her? I just text her with my work phone. I just and like uh, when Shanann and the kids went to North Carolina, she used my personal phone, and she just told me like to put pictures in a an app. And I just found that calculator. I just put you know just searched on the the app store like hidden pictures, and that's the calculator app for something popped up. Like in your your iCloud or your whatever isn't linked together, so she would know if you're getting it. You know, downloading apps and stuff like that. It used to be a long time ago, but when we got different uh, different phones, or uh, when our phone, like our phone contact list, would be synced up from the cloud and stuff like, I just I couldn't have like she had like tons, tons, tons of like phone contacts. I just couldn't have all.